Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn the final subtopic in chapter 6, Chemical Equilibrium, called Le Chatelier's Principle. Le Chatelier's Principle says if a system at equilibrium is disturbed by means you induce a stress, the system will re-attain the equilibrium so as to relieve that stress by shifting to the side that could reduce the effect of disturbance. We're going to discuss on all five types of disturbances that could possibly disrupt the equilibrium of a system. There are concentrations, pressure or volume, temperature, additions of inert gas, and also catalysts. Each disturbance have different explanations to be told. Here are some guides to explain the Le Chatelier's principle. First, you need to emphasize the type of disturbance involved. Let's say we want to talk about concentrations. The disturbance can be either increased or decreased. If we want to increase the concentrations, then we could write as when concentrations is increased or if concentrations is increased. Proceed to the second point on how the system is going to react to the disturbance. Usually, the second point will contract the first point. If the disturbance is increased, means the system will reduce the effect of disturbance by decreasing the factor mentioned earlier. Positions of equilibrium will be affected once the disturbance is applied. So to restore the equilibrium, the equilibrium is said to have shifted to the opposite sides from where the disturbance is applied. If the disturbance involves reactants, which is on the left-hand side, means the equilibrium positions will shift from left to right. And lastly, we can conclude from the whole process taking place in here, the concentrations of reactant will decrease whereas the concentrations of product will increase. We're going to look at how each disturbance applied can be explained. First, we could modify the concentrations of any of the compound, be it on the reactant side or product side. Say we have A as our reactant and B as our product. Adding some of the reactant means concentrations of A is increased. So the system will reduce the effect of disturbance by decreasing the concentrations of A. The equilibrium positions will shift forward from left to right until a new equilibrium is reached. And in the end, the concentrations of species will vary where the concentrations of A now will decrease, whereas the concentrations of B will increase. Given the following chemical reactions at equilibrium, so we have PCl3 to react with Cl2 to form PCl5 all in gaseous states. When an amount of PCl3 is removed, the reactions will no longer add equilibrium. The system will reduce the effect of disturbance by increasing the concentrations of other species on the reactant side, which in this case the Cl2. So the equilibrium positions will shift back weight from the right to the left until a new equilibrium is reached. So this could be seen from the value of Q and K now is equal. Lastly, concentrations of Cl2 will increase while concentrations of PCl5 will decrease. The second disturbance that we're going to discuss is in terms of volume or pressure. If any of these variables is mentioned, the same explanations can be used. If the disturbance applied is decreased in volume, then the explanations will be the same if pressure is increased. Same goes to increase in volume. The explanations for decrease in pressure are going to be similar. So the system will react to the disturbance by counteracting to the pressure applied. So in here, for the first case, we have increase in pressure. Means to restore the equilibrium, the pressure must be reduced by first reducing the number of gas particles. Then the equilibrium positions will be affected by shifting to the side with fewer number of mole, as suggested by how the system is going to react to the disturbance until a new equilibrium is achieved. As for the conclusions, look for the side with lower total number of mole considering gases state only. So the amount of species vary according to the number of moles. While for the second case, we have increase in volume where pressure is decreased, how the system react and where the equilibrium positions will shift follows the increasing trend in volume. So the system will reduce the effect of disturbance by increasing the number of gas particles which then results in increasing gas pressure. So the positions of equilibrium will shift to the side with more number of moles. 
When you are given disturbance in terms of pressure or volume, first take out the number of mole on both reactants and product sites. The reactant site has a total of 2 mole, whereas product site has only 1 mole. For this example, we're going to disrupt the system by decreasing the volume of gas. Bear in mind that it means the same as increase in pressure. It is very useful to mention this in your explanation so that you know the next following points will be the opposite to this trend. The system will reduce the effect of disturbance by reducing the number of gas particles as to reduce the pressure of the gas. So the equilibrium positions will shift to the side with fewer number of moles, which in this case from left to right, until a new equilibrium is reached. And lastly, we could see concentrations of both PCL3 and CL2 decrease, whereas concentrations of PCL5 increased. For the third disturbance, we have temperature. So this is the only disturbance that could possibly alter the value of equilibrium constants K. The effect of temperature on equilibrium is not the same as in concentrations and volume we have discussed just now. It will all depend on the type of reactions given. So additional information in the form of delta H, which tells you about the heat energy in a system will be given as to discuss on how equilibrium could be attained when there's disruptions in temperature. There are two values of delta H, one is positive, another one is negative. We have to see whether a given reaction is exothermic, which releases heat, or endothermic, which absorbs heat. So this positive delta H indicates that forward reactions favor endothermic reactions, means the temperature of system is low, while the backward reactions favor exothermic reactions, where the temperature of system is high. In contrast to this delta H positive, our negative delta H indicates that forward reactions favor exothermic reactions, high temperature, while backward reactions favor endothermic reactions, low temperature. So this will always be the first step you need to do by checking whether forward reactions is exo or endo before start explaining. We're going to take the reactions from previous slide with delta H positive in order to guide you with the explanations regarding Lee Chatelier's principle. By using all the information we have taken out from these reactions, endo forward, exo backward, say we're going to disrupt the equilibrium by lowering the temperature. So we will apply both reactant and product side with this disturbance, low and low temperature. So look for their compatibility. Which combinations will give a stable surrounding in terms of temperature? Not too hot, not too cold. We could see combinations on the left hand side with one high and one low temperature will reattain the equilibrium. So we need to mention exothermic reactions is favored. Next, for the second point, since exothermic reactions is favored, the system will reduce the effect of disturbance by releasing heat in order to increase the temperature of the system. So this point is basically answering to what is meant to have an exothermic reaction. As for positions of equilibrium, it will shift from right to left until new equilibrium is achieved. And lastly, more concentrations of B will be consumed and more concentrations of A will be formed. The change in temperature will affect the value of Kc or Kp since more reactant will be formed instead of product and we know the expressions of Kc or Kp suggest ratio of product over reactant. Therefore, Kp or Kc for these reactions will decrease. From this example, delta H given is negative, which tells us that forward reactions favor exothermic where heat is released, while backward reactions favor endothermic where heat is absorbed. When temperature of system is lowered, we could see combinations on the right hand side with one high and one low temperature is favorable. Since exothermic reactions is favored, the system will reduce the effect of disturbance by releasing heat as to increase the temperature of the system. So the equilibrium positions will shift from left to right until new equilibrium is achieved. So this will result more PCL3 and CL2 will be consumed, whereas more PCL5 will be formed. Since more product will be formed, this will lead to an increase of Kp or Kc value. Next disturbance is additions of inert gas. Inert gas is located at group 18 where they are unreactive, for example, helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon. 
We're going to treat this disturbance the same way as we have done for pressure or volume we have discussed in the second disturbance. So additions of inert gas can be conducted either at constant volume or constant pressure. Let's first look at constant pressure. This constant pressure belongs to the total pressure we have learned in Dalton's law of partial pressure in chapter 5. Let's see, we have this equilibrium of 3A to form 2B. We initially have a total pressure comprises of gas A and gas B. And then xenon was introduced to the system, hence affecting the total pressure now to have xenon as well. If our aim is to keep the pressure constant at pressure before xenon is added, which is the 5 atm, means the partial pressure for gas A and gas B need to tone down a bit. So when the partial pressure of gas A and B decrease, means equilibrium is disturbed. To re-attain the equilibrium, we need to increase the partial pressure for both gas A and gas B. So the same concept as we have learned in Le Chatelier's principle for pressure, increasing the pressure by increasing the number of gas molecules. So how to do this? By shifting to the side with greater number of mole. Additions of inert gas at constant volume will have no effect on the equilibrium positions due to the nature of the inert gas which is unreactive. They will only affect the total pressure of the gas, not the partial pressure of the other two gas A and B. If you can see, before we have 5 atm, but then after we add this xenon, we have 7 atm. As long as the volume remains unchanged, then all the concentrations of reactant and product will remain the same. The fifth disturbance that we're going to discuss is catalyst. Reactions can be sped up by the additions of catalysts, where the catalysts provide an alternative pathway which has lower activation energy. Recall that equilibrium states involve both forward and reverse reactions rate are equal. Same goes if catalyst is added. Both reactions will speed up equally, thereby allowing the system to reach equilibrium faster. So please keep in mind, even though the catalyst speed up the rate of reactions, but they do not have an effect on the equilibrium positions as well as Kc or Kp value. That's all for subtopic 6.3 Lee Chatelier's principle, and that's marks the end of this chapter 6. Thank you.